Welcome back, Controls Champions, to the PLC Programming Cookbook. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a classic example in ladder logic, a motor starter circuit. So you can see in front of me here, again, I'm, I'm working in Code Assist. This is free. You can uh, download it and install it and follow along. I will share this example file with you so you can download it. Uh, check out the description for a link. And as always, I'm programming in a virtual machine here. I'm not going to talk about why, but uh, do check that out. That's important if you're into PLC programming. Do check that out as well. <laughs> okay, so we've got a motor. We want to be able to turn it on and turn it off. And this is a little bit simplified from the perspective of how we program things today, but it's still very relevant and valid, especially from a learning perspective. I'm going to talk about this in a very general way. I'm going to be simulating here on my computer, so I'm not connected to a real PLC. So we're going to pretend that we have actual inputs and outputs, and I'll be simulating those here as well. So this is the start button, the stop button, and this light will indicate whether the motor is on or off. And we'll also be able to see that here when we're simulating. So this structure is incredibly common in PLC programming. Like I say, we may not see this very often as a motor starter anymore. That's uh, 20 years ago. But in this structure, we have start conditions. We have stop conditions. We've got the output. And then we've got the self latching right here. So in this case, we push the start button and we want that to start the motor. OK, so that's our start condition. When do we want the motor to stop? when the stop push button is pressed. And so you'll see this is a normally closed contact that's very common for stop conditions. Sometimes we also see a normally open contact. In this case, we've got an overload uh, that's very common for motor starters. Uh, for you know other conditions, we'd have other things to stop it. If the motor overloads, if you know this is basically a circuit breaker that's built into a motor starter, there is a contact, and this contact stays closed until it overloads, and then we know it's overloaded. So this is a way we might represent that. So when that happens, we stop. And then we want this to stay on even if we're not pushing the start button. So that's where this latching circuit comes in. And this is always in parallel with the start condition. So when the motor is on, keep it on until the stop button is pressed or the overload uh, trips. So let's simulate this, see what it looks like. You'll see I've already got the overload set as true. And again, this is to indicate that it's not overloaded. And how this might work in, in a real circuit, you know, maybe this is a normally closed or a normally open or whatever. That's not important right now. What, what's important is, is that this is considered a closed contact for our circuit. The overload condition is we're, we're not overloaded. The system is still running. It's still able to run. Okay, so if I push the start button, First of all, notice that the motor is not on. If I push the start button, all of these three conditions will be true and the motor will be on. And then if I push, notice uh, again, we're latched on here. If I push the stop button, this will go false, which will make the motor false and the latch will turn off. And that's really all there is to it. Again, this we, we see this structure all the time in ladder logic, even if we're not using it specifically for motor starters anymore. Usually there's more complicated logic behind when we want a motor to run than just a start button and a stop button. We still see, you know, start conditions, stop conditions, latch all the time. Keep this in mind. Understand it. You're going to see it. You're going to use it. All right. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comments. Tell me what you think and I will keep making these videos for you. Take care. Thanks for watching. If there's one thing I like more than making these videos, it's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.